Namaste. I'm Dr. Malati Panchavag. I'm an anesthesiologist and a perioperative physician here at the MVD Center in Pune. In today's educational video, we will be talking about the meaning of trigeminal neuralgia. What exactly is this disorder? Which is the nerve that causes this disorder? And what are the symptoms of this disease? So that any patient who is suffering from different kinds of pain in the face should be able to come to some kind of conclusion on what their disease is. Now let us look at some of the common causes of trigeminal neuralgia. The commonest cause is nerve compression followed by presence of a brain tumor or a disease called herpes which is an infectious disease, multiple sclerosis or there are several other minor causes which are rare causes for trigeminal neuralgia. Hyperactivity of the trigeminal nerve is the reason for trigeminal neuralgia. The trigeminal nerve actually arises from the pons which is a part of the brain stem which is situated behind and below the main brain. The origin of the trigeminal nerve is from the pons and the trigeminal nerve has two roots, the sensory root and the motor root. The work of the trigeminal nerve is to supply sensations to the face. It also has a motor root which supplies certain muscles of the face, especially those muscles that are involved in chewing. The trigeminal nerve, after it exits from the brain, goes to a ganglion which is known as the trigeminal ganglion. From here, three divisions are formed from the trigeminal nerve. These divisions are called V1, V2 and V3. V is for the Roman numeral V which means 5. So the fifth nerve has division 1, division 2 and division 3 which are the V1, V2 and V3 divisions. The V1 division is called the ophthalmic division because it supplies the forehead and part of the nose as well as the eye. The V2 division supplies the upper part of the cheek area and also part of the lower part of the eye as well as some bits of the nose and the upper lip. The V2 division is also called the maxillary division. The V3 division is the mandibular division and this supplies the lower part of the jaw as well as the lower lip and chin. Trigeminal neuralgia frequently affects people who are more than 50 years of age and it is more common in women than in men. This does not mean that people who are lesser than 50 years of age cannot have trigeminal neuralgia, nor does it mean that men cannot have trigeminal neuralgia. These are simply statistics. Trigeminal neuralgia is the most common cause of facial pain and of course there are other facial pain syndromes which could mimic trigeminal neuralgia. The most important feature of trigeminal neuralgia is that the pain is exceptionally severe. Many people call it suicidal pain. Though the condition is not life threatening, the intensity of the pain is so much that the patient is not able to lead a normal life. Trigeminal neuralgia is treated by neurologists and neurosurgeons. Neurologists are physicians who deal with medicines which are related to trigeminal neuralgia treatment and neurosurgeons are people who perform surgery to relieve the pain of trigeminal neuralgia. There are both medical and surgical treatments for trigeminal neuralgia but MVD surgery is the most effective of all treatments and has a possibility of leading to long-term pain relief if performed technically well. The symptoms of trigeminal neuralgia are typically a stabbing, pricking or electric shock like pain sensation in the face in one of the three divisions, the V1, the V2 or the V3 division. This pain is so severe that the patient finds it difficult to eat 
or drink normally. They are only able to do so under the effect of the medic medicines that are given for controlling the pain of trigeminal neuralgia. The classical characteristic of this trigeminal neuralgia pain is that it lasts for few seconds only in the initial part of the disease. But as the condition progresses, the pain can last for several minutes or even much longer than that. Another important characteristic of the trigeminal neuralgia pain is that it is episodic. That means it comes in attacks. The pain is sharp, intense, a stabbing pain is present in the cheek or in the jaw or sometimes even deep in the eye and the patient may feel this like an electric shock being given to the face. Some patients also complain of pain deep in the ear. When we say that the trigeminal neuralgia pain is episodic, that means there are attacks of pain. This also means that there are periods of pain relief between two episodes of pain attack. A very important observation in these patients is that they also suffer from anxiety. Anxiety from the thought of when the next pain attack is going to occur. The pain attacks are triggered by touching the face or the teeth in terms of activities like shaving, applying makeup, brushing the teeth, touching a tooth or a lip with the tongue, touching the tongue to the hard palate or the soft palate, eating, drinking, talking, or even a light breeze like that of a ceiling fan or the breeze that touches your face when you're on a two-wheeler or when you're going in a vehicle or even splashing water on the face or wiping the face with a towel or a handkerchief. We asked some of our patients to describe how they felt this pain. And the surprising thing was that many of them said that this pain was the severest pain that they have experienced in their life. Some women said this was even similar to the pain of giving birth to a child. Some described this as that of the pain that one experiences during a heart attack or while passing a kidney stone. Some of them expressed this as like there were thousands of needle pricks on the face at the same time. Some said it was like applying chili powder to the face and the kind of burning that is produced at that time is similar to the pain that is there in trigeminal neuralgia. One patient went to say it was like applying a 240 volt electrical connection to the face. So where exactly does the pain occur? The areas of the face that is supplied by the trigeminal nerve like the cheek, jaw, teeth, gums or lips are affected by the trigeminal neuralgia pain. Less often, the eye and forehead may also be affected. So the V1 division is the least commonly affected amongst the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve. The most important characteristic of neuralgia is that it affects only one side of the face, either the right or the left. And more often than not, the pain is generally focused in any one spot initially. But as the disease progresses, the pain may be spread in a slightly wider pattern and the exact location is difficult to pinpoint because it's sort of a dispersed kind of pain area. As the disease progresses, the episodes of pain become more frequent and intense over time. The pain attacks occur in intermittent bursts that last for a few seconds to few minutes as we discussed before. But as the disease progresses, the attacks of pain become more and more frequent and the intensity of the pain also increases. And when the disease is well progressed, the pain is nearly almost continuous because the attacks are so frequent and so intense. A very important feature of trigeminal neuralgia is there are times when there are pain holidays, which means that if you take the entire disease over a period of a year, there are flare-ups and then there are pain holidays. So what are these flare-ups? The flare-ups are periods of the year when the pain attacks appear frequently and with greater intensity. These flare-ups continue for a few weeks or few months and this is followed 
by a pain-free period, which we call a pain holiday. And the pain holiday can last for several weeks or months or even up to a year. So much so that the patient feels that their trigeminal neuralgia has been cured completely. Although the trigeminal neuralgia pain may seem to disappear, it always comes back, often with greater intensity than before. There is a condition known as atypical trigeminal neuralgia. In this condition, instead of sharp stabbing pain, the facial pain that the patient experiences is like a persisting dull ache. There are of course several other versions which are also classified as atypical trigeminal neuralgia. If you liked the content of this video and you found it useful, do remember to hit the like button and share and subscribe the channel please. If you liked the content of this video, please write to us and let us know what you feel. Let us know what other videos you would like us to make. This helps us to plan topics that are of use to the patients who suffer from this disease. Thank you and best of health to you.